Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I have a tutorial Tuesday and I'm going to show you how I prepare my mill hill kits before I stitch them. I'm going to go through kind of a little bit about mill hill kits, uh, kind of what you can expect when you get a mill hill kit. And I am showing you this on this uh, kit, which is the Scotch Pine Santa. It's in the Timberline Santa collection. And by the way, I am hosting the hashtag Mill Hill uh, Santa Sal 2023, where to uh, join, just uh, share a Mill Hill Santa or Gnome that you are stitching on on Instagram. Um, I might be doing some, some giveaways at the end. I am doing 12 of these Santas. They're fairly big, but I kind of like them. So uh, this is what you get in the kit. You get a hank of thread, which you have to kind of sort depending on the thread list uh, in the thread list. You get one, two, three bags of beads. Uh, in those bags, you will find your needles. Uh, you will get one embroidery needle and one beading needle. And all of these, uh, which bead, bead is which? Well, they're pretty smart. They collect the different colors of beads in in the whole package. And then when you look at the description uh, and the names of the beads, you can find that next to the name of the beads is a little symbol. In this case, I think it is a little star. Um, and that will show you that everything that has the little star, they belong to the same bag. And in this case, I have black, pet petite black ones. So it's quite easy to know which uh, little one that has that little baggie has the the ones with the stars today so this is the perforated paper which is what you're going to stitch on and inside in the instructions you can find which material it is and this is bra antique brown this has the same color on both sides and when that happens when you get perforated paper that has the same side I just look at the different two sides and I figure out which one that I prefer if I see some some uh, like that it is a little bit cleaner on one side or something and then I put the back side up because now we are going to do the middle and when you do the middle on a perforated paper you do two diagonal lines they are going to go from the point to point I am using the pilot color eno which is a color pencil but as a uh, mechanical pencil S really really love them they show up really good at the back side um, but they don't show up on the front and that is what I'm looking for when I'm looking for a pen to make this you can use a regular pencil but they usually are a little bit harder to see on these dark materials these um, pilot color you know really show shows up and also if you have a red one you can then write on the pattern the pattern has two little arrows which show, that kind of points to the middle if you then just draw red lines uh, where the arrow points you will get the middle for that too so you do two diagonal lines where the diagonal lines meet you get the middle fairly simple fairly simple so with that done um we can put uh yeah that my hands are trying to tell you that you shouldn't f try to fold it because that will hurt your cardstock and that will also hurt your end result. So drawing those lines are your, your best bet. Then we're going to go to the instructions. They have special instructions. They have like step by step. And you are going to see that on the other side where you have the thread key and the bead key, uh, that there are some examples where they want you to go back to see what the steps means. But they do have them in a very logical order. And I really prefer to follow their order when I stitch. It makes it a little bit easier. They also describe that how you draw the little diagonal to figure out where the middle is. You have all the stitches, how you stitch the beads and all speciali speciality stitches and some general beading information. It's a really good little pamphlet. And even though I have stitched like eight or nine of these now, uh, different kind of mill holes, I still read them through. 
it's actually really good and it, it helps you in the long run and do it before you start stitching so you don't have to unstitch anything so this is the thread key the thread key shows you uh, all of the threads all of the beads and kind of how many strands you're going to use and what they work for so you all the threads are DMC threads, all the beads are Milhel beads. So you have the first row, which is the symbols. You have the second row, which is kind of the name of the beads or name of the threads. The third row is telling you the number of the beads or the threads. Um, and also you see the number of threads that you have in the hank. So... Uh, 368 here has two threads meaning that you can find two lengths of thread in that hank and that can help you a little bit if there is colors that are similar that you don't know which are which just go here when you sort them out because i do recommend sorting them out before you start stitching it will make your life a lot easier you also have which stitch you will do, whether it's cross stitch, back stitching or the speciality stitches. And those are described in those special instructions. You can also see how many strands you will use in the furthest away um, per stitch. So backstitching step one uses two threads and uh, it will show in step one what that means. And then you have the fringe stitch, uh, it uses six strands and so on. So it's quite easy to read, um, often using three str th strands of thread to stitch the cross stitches. Uh, when you do it, it gets very thick, really thick and good. And, and, uh, good coverage and then you have a description here with the color of strand and if you're going to do half cross or full cross and also it says two strands of thread they recommend looping the thread and then uh, adding that loop onto your beading needle and I agree I don't loop my thread otherwise but for this I loop my thread because otherwise you don't get the threads to the beading needle eye because it is a super the whole eye. So to, to go after here, you have a symbol, for example, that moon, that means that you are going to use black, which is 310 with three strands and cross stitches. And then you have all the symbols for the beads. So now we're going to start by uh, taking care of the threads. Now, these are very long lengths of thread. If you prefer to do use the, those long lengths, that's up to you. However, I feel that they are way too long. So I usually cut them in half, but I don't cut them in half until I have sorted them. It makes it a lot easier to just sort them and then cut them in half as I um, add them. I use frost drops. I previously used like little cards and then just punched little holes in my cards uh, to and then write the number. Nowadays I use frost drops and I actually have one set that is only from Millhill Kits. So all of these threads are from previous Millhill Kits that I've already stitched. So you get a lot of extra material. So that is good. Extra thread is good. And then what I do is I just go through this first to figure out if any of the threads that are on the hank are in my set. And then I remove them from my kind of main set, my core set, and um, just fill in with any drops that I don't have before. But I really enjoy having that extra set of threads. So uh, very easy. I this this is a book binding ring it's very easy to separate and I know that I'm gonna have white I also know that I'm gonna have a ecru so I start by removing those two from my little list here and then I go to because I always go white and ecru is above the numbers while Millhill always put them at last then I start uh, from the beginning again, and that is the black 310 is the first color. Don't have the 312. So now I'm going to my stack of frost drops that I have lying around. And by the way, if you think these are cute, you can pick them up uh, in the link down below. I sell them in my store. 
I have designed them. I actually kind of like the bees. They're kind of cute. Then I use a Faber-Castell permanent marker to write on this. Uh, I actually haven't tried with normal, like, normal pens but uh, these are um, have a little bit of lamination on them uh, gloss lamination so I used to use a permanent marker and I write the number um, and then I used to sort every one out and here is all of the little frost drops that I'm going to use I'm starting with the black because that is a color that is easy to figure out which is which I know that is two threads because that is what the key tells me so when I pulled two threads I always pull one thread at a time it will make it less messy I fold them in half and then I cut that in half and then I fold them again and after I have fold them I pick up the floss drop of that color and I put the threads into the hole now if you would just use plain cardstock and just punch holes you can do just the same way, but just on that plain cardstock. That was how I started. But I kind of like these floss drops because it's fairly easy to flip through. And you don't have like this long list. And you can reuse them much easier because they are singular. Here I'm picking out the white. I know that the white are three strands. So I pick out all three of them and line them up. Again, I'm just going to fold them in the middle, so line them up, uh, get them out there, fold them, take a pair of scissors. I usually use small scissors, but these were the ones that was laying next to me because I have forgotten taking my embroidery scissors in. So I'm gonna, gonna use those to cut it in half and then fold it in half again and loop it around the little hole. And uh, then I just go through all of the colors one by one, kind of choosing which one I want to use. Um, in this case, I think it is the e crew I went with as the next because, hey, I thought I saw the difference. I do recommend when you do this kind of sorting to do it in daylight or under daylight bulbs. Uh, these are photo lights, so they give you really nice white light. So it's really easy to see the differences between the threads. So I just go through them one by one until I have sorted all of them. It takes a little bit of time, but it's really worth it. I promise you, it is worth it in the end. And when them all are done, I'm putting them back on a book, a separate book binding ring. And I have my little kit of threads to be used. Um, yeah, I really like having them this way. It makes things a lot easier. Oh. I forgot that one. I didn't, um, I forgot to cut it in half. That is how long it is if you don't cut them in half. Now you can have them really long if you want to, but I really enjoy having them. They're a little bit shorter than I usually have. That is why I have a separate, separate bunch of them, separate from my main DMC, but it works kind of quite nice. Now we're going to head over to the beads. So this is how I store my beads. This is a box for like diamond paintings, but I saw it and I thought, hey, this is going to be so good. So you just open it up and inside you have these little plastic containers. They have a little lid. They have a little opening that you can pour the beads out. And all, almost all of the beads in this box are actually leftover beads from previous kits. So you do get a lot of materials in the kits, both when it comes to the threads and the beads. And I really, really like that because if there should be a shortage of beads in one of the kits, um, can happen uh, then I have all of these to use and also I want to start designing with beads and having a bunch of them and seeing the different colors it makes it a little bit easier to know which ones you want to order or use so when I go through these I start always uh, by checking if I already have these or not. If I don't have the beads, I pick out my little container and then I use the same permanent marker from Faber-Castell to write the numbers uh, on the box. So this is a very fine tip pen, as you can see. Um, 
And then I go through and look, do I have the color? If I have the color, I will fish it up and then I will replace it with one of the empties because then I know I can just put it back there and they won't kind of fall over or move around. But I realized fairly quick that most of these colors that I saw here, I actually didn't have. This is a, makes it a little bit easier to write. Just put the little thing into the box because then you can lean your hand on the other ones. Just a little tip. Um, I usually do it that way, but I thought I'd take them out just because of the video. And then I realized, no, that, that is not the way to go. And then I just continue to write the numbers because, yes, as I said, most of these beads I didn't already have. And sometimes that happens. For example, I found a kit that needed bead that I hadn't beaded up and I had just a few of one. So now I'm going to need to purchase them for that kit. And that wasn't a Mill Hill kit. It was a separate uh, project that I had kitted up myself. The Mill Hill kits do have the beads. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. So um, just going through, getting the last of these boxes. I do have another one of these little bags or I don't know the full with these little things um I picked mine up on Amazon it will be linked in the description down below if you want to check it out with mine came one uh a little uh, thing as said this is for diamond paintings you have these little plastic plates that you can use on them and I will actually be sorting my plates on one of them because they they are very smart so yes, that is, oh, look, there's, an, there's a rogue bead in there. Yes, a rogue little bead, but that happens sometimes. Some of these I do have filled up with other beads because I've done a couple of bead projects where I bought uh, a whole package of beads for. So some of them will have a little bit more beads than others. I do have uh, like some extras. So I do have a whole one full with the old needles. I always use the needles that comes in the kit, but then I have a bunch of beading needles and sewing needles extra for whenever I need those. Uh, so I save all of them. Also, I have a, done a bunch of kit lately that have magnets on the back. We don't use magnets at home that much for the fridge so I usually make them into little ornaments so I still have the magnets in those little boxes uh, and you can also see one that is called treasure so whenever a uh, kit has a treasure in it I will add it into that one because then I only have to work from this box which makes it a little bit easier so with this came this is the little plate I was talking about so this is for diamond paintings you pour them in you shake them around a little bit and you get them to line in the right direction and then they will be easier to pick up with that uh, sticky little pen if you've ever seen someone done that has done diamond paintings I have done one I don't think it's my thing I, I really enjoy the cross stitching and the beading much much more so I carefully uh, pour everything that one of the bags contain. I take one bag at a time. This time, uh, first I'm going to take out the beads. I'm going to save the beading needle because I'm going to use the beading needle to pick these up. Then I have my little current needle box. That is where I put my embroidery needle. Then I'm going to kind of order my little uh, boxes so here I figure out which colors as you saw this one has a black in it so the black has that little uh, star next to it so what I do here is I know that is gray root bear uh, pe petite black and petite green velvet are the th four colors well petite rich red is also one of them and I totally didn't see that one it you'll see I'll figure have figured it out later and then I just go through the different numbers so the ones that I'm going to use I open up so and and have like the hole towards me and then I take the ones that I'm not going to use I'm going to put one in between whether it's supposed to be in between or not I'm going to put it in between and the reason for that is that when you are sorting it is with that little space in between 
they don't fall into each other when you just uh, pour them from from your needle so it's, it makes it a little bit easier and then I'm going through these uh, one by one kind of figuring out which color is which um, just to kind of order them a little bit here um, and this is uh, when I realized that both the green and the red is going to be here it's going to take me a second but I'm going to figure it out that those reds are supposed to have to be open to I think it's when I'm shaking them around and like there's so many reds here I'm going to kind of first I flatten them out then I'm going to tap them beads are round but the holes in them are flat so when you carefully tap like this they will kind of lay with the holes up so it's a little bit easier to kind of pick them up so this is where I start picking up the red and realize but hey oh I, I missed to put the the red there so I have to figure that out and move these around a little bit because I need to have one space between the green and the red just to ma make sure that I don't pour more beads in the red that shouldn't be there because I left that bead in there it's still in there that rogue little bead anyhow I start by picking up the reds I'm doing this very carefully just one bead at a time it takes time I think I figured out that it took me like an 45 minutes to an hour to sort all of the beads so I do recommend put on like a floss tube video or something in the background it makes it much much easier but this is a very like it takes time to sort them but then you don't have to kind of sort them in your mind now if you don't like sorting beads there is these tools called like sticky bob and sticky bill they're two versions of the same product and what it basically is it looks like a mini cd case that has sticky surfaces on each side so when you open it up you have two sticky surfaces so if you have two bags in one of these you could pour all the beads from one bag on one side one of the sticky surfaces and all the beads of the other on the other and they won't become as long as they are a flat layer and they're not rolling around they will not uh, contaminate each other when you close it and then you can pick them up from that sticky surface the way i do it is i sort all the beads because that for me makes it much much easier then i can just pour up the colors i want and then I will just pour out when I'm coming to a color. I will pick that color up. I will pour it back into this little white white thing. I want to call it plate, maybe. Uh, and then I will pick up the colors there without having to sort them. And then I just pour any leftovers back into it. And I don't pour all of them. I just pour a little bit. Then if I need more, I pour a little bit more. You see here, I have put every every color except for those uh, green little petite uh, little beads and now what I do I use the little funnel because this came with the kit I, I it, the funnel fits perfectly and then I just tap them in there so the last color I don't have to sort but I do have to sort the other ones and then I do the exact same thing with the other one uh, taking care to know that all these colors are the colors without the little stars next to them uh, and then I tried to figure out which is which here I was a little bit confused I didn't know if opal was blue but after looking at all of the other name I realized that opal is blue and crystal is basically glassy see-through so um I again sorted sorted all of them uh, into their little pockets and when all of that is done I will just put the needle in I will close them up but I will keep all of these just lined up here in their number order so whenever I go to uh, do this specific kit because I sort one kit at a time uh, they will be in the right order and I can just pick them out and use them as I want to so that is how I take care of my beads. Uh, 
that is how I take care of my threads and the pattern and I'm ready to start stitching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just comment down below. Down below you find all of the links to these different supplies. Uh, I hope I made sense. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you later uh, on Friday with my floss tube video where you might see some progress, even maybe a finish of this. We'll see, we'll see when I record this. I've just barely started. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, have an awesome week and I'll see you later. Bye.